Hello everyone, welcome back. This is not the first review of the HD5770 on this channel. Still, I wanted to revisit this card to see if it's a viable option for gaming in 2024. There are some quirks to the card from this architecture, and we'll provide a bit more info on this in the conclusions. For the viewers that see the Juniper chip tested for the very first time, the GPU's the window seen on screen right now should provide all the needed details, except of the TDP of 108 watts. I was hoping that the Batmobile variant of the car that we are testing will provide something new, at the very least in the cooling department, but that was not meant to be. The Gigabyte produced Batmobile uses the same type of cooling system as MSI's R5770-PMD1G, one fan and one copper cord aluminum heatsink. The card warmed up at 63C while running heaven for a delta over ambient of 38C. This is better than what I expected. It could be that the serving of fresh Arctic MX for thermal paste helped. The gaming performance we're about to see in the following section was collected running the card inside the rusty but trusty Z230 workstation from HP, sporting the i7-4770 equivalent Xeon and 32GB of DDR3 RAM running at 1600MHz in dual channel. I skipped Alien Isolation. The game is single player and it didn't get any updates. My past videos on the card are still relevant in that regard. Unfortunately, the same goes for Apex Legends. The game was not really playable in 2022 and 2023, and the numbers seen on screen right now, collected this year, are a clear indication as to why. Sure, you can go sightseeing with that FPS, and maybe manage an ambush on an unsuspecting player. I mean, nobody would expect the HD5770 to pop in in a match, but that's pretty much it. While I did gather the results in windowed and borderless mode, the performance in Fortnite is pretty much the same in full screen mode as well. I got 60 FPS on average and 36 for the 1% lows at 1080 resolution in performance mode. Thing is, places like the Underworld will be more demanding and you might want to drop the resolution. At 720 the FPS increases, reaching 86 FPS on average and 1% lows in the 40s. Playable in my book, but it could cause issues if you're more competitive. Fallout 4 will provide a playable experience for most of the time at 720 resolution and low settings, with frame rates averaging 48 and occasionally dropping to 28. However, entering Diamond City will drop these numbers to 27 and 25 respectively. If Fallout 4 was supposed to replace GTA 5, Prey was my substitute for Alien Isolation. 720 resolution and low settings provide the best FPS values, with the average in the 70s and 1% lows in the 40s. Increasing the resolution to 1080 has the 1% lows take a serious dive, so I would avoid that. I decided against removing GTA 5 from the list of games to test the card in, but it may very well be that this would be THE GTA game to play for quite a while. So, 1080 resolution and lowest possible settings has the HD5770 averaging 48 FPS and 1% lows of 30. This is fine for single player. I also left the results at 794 by 571 resolution. If this raises your eyebrows, you may want to check some of the latest community posts. The FPS numbers seen on screen right now for Overwatch 2 were captured in the training level. An actual match will run at about 80% of the FPS, so despite the almost 60 FPS on average, 1080 resolution is not for this card. Drop instead to 720 where the average of 108 FPS and more importantly the 1% lows of 84 will allow a good gaming experience in an actual match. At 720 resolution I could not get good numbers in CS2. The average was in the high 30s and 1% lows reached 20. I even did the unthinkable and used FSR at quality settings, and while the average was ok for pal enthusiasts, the 1% lows left me unimpressed. Dota 2 runs just fine on the HD5770. The replay I used for testing had the card average 79 FPS at 1080 resolution and lower settings, except for the render scale, that one was manually set 100%. The 1% loss of 51 didn't feel problematic to me, but hey, I can't play the game to save my life, so take that with a grain of salt. On to the Hi-Res Studio trio of games, all tested at 1080 resolution, but different quality settings. Paladins was a win at 96 FPS on average and 55 FPS for the 1% loss at high settings. 
RAM Real averaged 58 FPS and had the 1% lows at 41, also at high settings. This is where either a drop of resolution or a drop on quality settings will help. In a similar fashion, Rogue Company gets less than stellar averages and 720 resolution may be a better choice. I had to run Rainbow Six Siege in borderless mode, but the results I got were disheartening. While the game can run on this card, the performance I got was not encouraging. This one is not for the HD5770. I got somewhat similar results with Splitgate. The game also ran in borderless mode and low settings, but the performance was not something to write home about. At 1080 resolution and low settings, the HD5770 averaged 122 FPS in Valorant during the spike planting training mission. The 1% lows of 83 are also fine. At least for me, it's not the E5770 that's holding me back in this game. The card averaged 83 FPS in Warframe, windowed mode, and full screen mode behaved almost identically. The 1% lows of 54 feels fine. This game is a PvE title and you don't need a high refresh rate to handle the bots. I suspect that World of Tanks Blitz uses borderless mode. This would explain both the 60fps cap I noticed and the fact that the game launched and ran just fine in the HD5770. The average FPS was 59 with the 1% lows of 40. This latter number might be caused by the transition from the game scene to the scoreboard. I was not quick enough to stop recording the FPS. The Terra scale to architecture was already long in the tooth a couple of years ago, and that was when I did not run into any issues with them. But then in 2023, I had troubles running the games in full screen mode, only to then have those troubles go away on their own. And then in 2024, guess what, I had again the same full screen issues I had a year ago. I somehow stumbled into a fix, basically playing a bit with the monitor settings in the AMD control center will fix the issue. Funny thing is, even after reverting those monitor setting changes, full screen mode will still work. Run the DU and install the drivers again, guess what, full screen mode still works. So whatever the driver app did, it persisted outside of the monitor settings and it is out of what DDU cleans up. Now, the card performs slower than it did a couple of years ago, thanks to games getting updates. Having to deal with full screen issues on top of that is a bit discouraging. On the price aspect, I find it to be too high for the baggage the card comes with. My guess is that no seller is willing to settle for less, since it's no longer worth the bother of listing it than shipping it. But then that makes it a poor sale, especially considering one could get more modern cards for the same price that perform just as well or even better, but without the full screen issues. I always thought that while the HD5770 would lack the power to run the newer games, it would still be a viable option for the older titles. But the full screen issues rediscovered in this video has its usable lifespan cut much shorter than I expected. I'll hold on to the HD5770s. These are cars that I had fun repairing and there is a good chance that I might need them again to prove the minimum requirements of various indie games. But if you have access to newer old cards like the HD 7770, get one of those instead. We're done with this video. Thanks for the emotional support and I'll see you for the next one.